Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here with a new episode of Who's Next? Today we're heading to Land Lakes, Florida to interview 15-year-old TJ DeCare. TJ, how you doing? Doing good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Now, I started racing at 15 myself, so a little bit late to the game. I want to know how long you've been racing now that you're only 15 years old. Um, I started in go-karts when I was four, and I had my first go-kart race when I was five. And then I believe I was 12 or 13 when I had my first legend car race. And uh, next Saturday, I'll be having my first pro late motor race. That's awesome. Well, you've been doing it for a long time, it sounds like. You got a lot of accolades, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, but first, I got to ask, this is a little off topic, but Land of Lakes, Florida, is that where the butter's made? No, it's not, actually. What? All right, that's that was surprising. See, I'm glad I asked, because I almost assumed that. Well, you started racing at four years old, as you mentioned. Uh, you're currently racing Inex Young Lions Legend Cars. I've uh, been doing very well. You just tested that Pro Late model, getting ready to race. Uh, I know you were at Hickory Testing, which is one of my yep. favorite short tracks. It's where I got my feet wet in the stock car scene. Tell us about that experience and, and making that transition from a Legend car to a full-bodied stock car. Um, it's definitely a lot different. Um, in a Legend car, you're more centered in the car. In a late model, you're sitting more to the left side, which is a little bit different, getting how close to the wall you can be. But uh, I got pretty close one time, which is pretty cool. And that, I think the track's really different compared to all the other tracks. Yeah, they always told me when I started racing, and a lot of people still say, if you could win at Hickory, you could win it anywhere. And I, I think the reason for that is obviously it's a worn out, rough, abrasive surface. So being able to manage your tires well and, and just have good racecraft at a place like that is very important, but what also is unique about it is both ends of the racetrack are totally different corners. So it's hard to not only get the setup right, but just as a driver, approach those corners totally differently every lap. Uh, but one thing I want to get into is you do a lot of racing, obviously, but you're also playing high school baseball. So how are you balancing yeah. the two of those? What is that like? Um, it's really cool, actually. My baseball coach is really flexible with my schedule. You know, if I have to miss a Friday practice to go to, to, go to a race, but uh, most of the games we play in high school are during the week, so it doesn't really affect my racing schedule too much. But uh, as racing's picking up, baseball is kind of slowly dying down. And uh, I think two weeks ago was our last game, so I can full, uh, full-time full race now. That's awesome to hear. I'm glad you got all those uh, those reps in on the baseball field. And, of course, that seat time in the race car. It's great you're able to do the two of them. They don't really conflict. That's got to be a lot of fun. But what are your friends at school and your, your baseball team teammates uh, think about your whole racing journey um they all think it's really cool I mean uh my coaches kind of understand because they're a little bit older but the uh, kids don't really understand it which is like you try to tell them something uh something that you did that you thought was really cool but they don't really understand it but uh, I think it's just part of it well that's totally understandable I know when I started my racing career it's always hard to explain to people who maybe uh, never understood the industry or, or paid much attention to it. But when they learn about it, they always find it super interesting. And that's always fun to talk about and kind of educate them about it. I want to get into some of your career highlights here. Now, please forgive me for looking down at my sheet because there's a lot to go through. and I don't want to miss any. So first starting in 2013, you're a Florida Champ Cart League champion, a Dirt Devils Speedway champion, a WKA Daytona Dirt National champion, a sportsman champ, Florida Dirt Championship Series, WK Dirt National again in 2014. Now flash forward to 15 and 16. Uh, more Florida Dirt Championship, WK Dirt Nationals. Uh, and then in 2016, a Maxis National Champion, Burris National Champion, a WK Dirt National Champion. And in, that was in 2019. Over 100 karting victories as of 2020. Uh, and then, of course, started branching out to the legend car scene and taking that next step in your career in 2021. So maybe we'll, we'll start right there. What racking up all those accomplishments, what does that feel like to you? What do you think the biggest one of those uh, was as far as the meaning and, and just the accomplishment itself? Um, for the go-karts, I think it's really cool that uh, in Land Lakes, Florida, there's a track called uh, Florida Dirt Motor Speedway, which is owned by Sam Rodriguez, um, grandfather of Eric Almarola, which is really cool. And uh, I'm really close with him, and he's almost like family to me. And um, for the go-karts, I mean, I think the 
Mexican Nationals was definitely my biggest win. We went four wide going into turn three on the last lap and uh, came out in front, which I thought was really cool. And uh, for my legend car, uh, this year has been really a dream. I mean, winning both Winter Nationals and Spring Nationals so far has been awesome. My team has been on point and uh, everything's been going well this season. That's great to hear. I can only imagine what that felt like. Four wide for a win, a championship. That's got to be an awesome feeling. Uh, and it must have been pretty epic to see. I know uh, all these accolades obviously require a lot of races. So how many races do you actually run in a year, in a year would you say? I know maybe less now with Legend Cars, maybe not. Uh, but maybe talk about a little bit what that was like, all those karting races and different series you were competing in. I mean, in a go-kart race, like a normal go-kart day, you probably run about three races. Um, it could be Junior 3A, Junior 3B, and Junior 3 Pro. And uh, if you're in, like, the between ages, between junior classes and senior classes, you can kind of run. If they let you run up a little bit or uh, you can stay down. And uh, when I got to the age, I was able to do both. That's what I tried doing. And uh, I just I ran a lot of races for a long time, and I got to 100-kart wins. That's very, very cool. That's a that's great accomplishment. You just seem to continue to to do better each year and, and as you climb the ranks, continue to have success. I know in the last year and a half approximately, you have twenty seven legend car feature wins. So that transition seems to be going well. I know we talked about the transition from a legend car to a stock car, but what was that like first getting in a legend car from a cart? Um I thought it was, it was different, of course. I mean, every step is obviously different, but um, it's kind of like the same idea almost, you know, under horsepowered car, trying to get as much momentum as you can. And uh, I think I applied my go-kart skills to legend cars pretty well. And uh, I'm going to keep doing my best uh, to finish out the season. Well, you've had a great start. You've already won the Florida Winter Nationals in the Young Lion division and the Spring National Tennessee Young Lion Championship. So that's a great start to the year. I think now it's time we hop into a little bit of rapid fire questions if you're ready for that. All right, I'll try. All right. Well, first, who is your racing idol? Definitely Kyle Larson. I mean, everything steps foot into, I mean, he dominates. So I think that's really cool about him. Favorite racetrack? Um, I'd probably say Nashville Fairgrounds. It was a flat track. It was my first time on a flat track. Not a lot of grip, and um, as the car seems to go away, kind of have to search, more like a dirt track, you know, and the track goes away, kind of have to search for the speed, and then, uh, I think that's really cool and different about that track. How about a favorite movie? Talladega Nights, for sure. You have a favorite school subject? Um, probably science. All right, one of my favorites to end it off, favorite food? Probably crab legs. Oh, interesting. I like I love that seafood. One. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that was great. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Who's Next. This has been your host, Anthony Alfredo. Now back to the bull ring. <laughs>